Hey, folks, welcome to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network podcast. I am your host, Lewis Carlin. We're right here on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Thank you so much for joining me today. The WWE was interested in Moose prior to his contract running out with Impact Wrestling. Uh, Wrestling Inc. reporting here. It says WWE reportedly expressed interest in Moose. It says it appears WWE was ready to make a play for Impact Wrestling star Moose. According to Fightful Select, WWE was interested in signing the former self-proclaimed TNA World Heavyweight Champion as his contract ex- approach, approach expiration earlier this summer. Sources told Fightful that the WWE was interested in Moose both for NXT and potentially the main roster with talk of Moose potentially bypassing NXT in favor of Raw and or SmackDown. Ultimately, an offer was never made. However, an Impact Wrestling offer to Moose provided to be enticing enough that he re-signed with Impact Wrestling before a, before a WWE offer could officially be made. So the WWE expressed, expressed interest in Moose. I'm sure they spoke to Moose about it. I'm sure they spoke to Moose about potential details about taking him you know, bypassing NXT and putting him straight on Raw and SmackDown. And um, what happened? What happened? Moose signed with Impact Wrestling. Moose signed with Impact Wrestling. Remember a few months ago? Remember a few months ago where um, when Triple H during the interview said all the best wrestlers are in the WWE and if they're not, they want to be. Remember when he said that? Remember when he said that? So what happened, Triple H? (laughs) What happened here, Triple H? It you know, looks like uh, looks looks like Moose took your theory and just tossed it in the garbage can. He just took it and kicked it into outer space. He proved you wrong. He proved you wrong, Triple H. All the best wrestlers are in the WWE, and if they're not, they want to be. Yeah, you, yeah. You express interest in Moose. You know, said Moose. You know, we'll bypass NXT. We'll go right to Raw SmackDown. What do you say? And Moose says, you know what else? You know what I say? I think I'm signing with Impact Wrestling. That's what I say. That's what I say. So so good on Moose. Good on Moose. You know, even though the, the contract offer was there, Moose realized that his best option was uh was Impact Wrestling. Because he he could have gone to the WWE and and he he maybe he would have had a it would have been um a good first one or two match, but there was there was a good chance he would just get lost in the shuffle there. Really good chance he would just get lost in the shuffle. And in Impact Wrestling, he's he's without a doubt the top guy. And he will defeat Kenny Omega eventually for the Impact Wrestling World title um, down the road. I, I'm, I'm, I have a good feeling about that. But uh, but again, yeah, Triple H, all the best wrestlers are in the WWE. And if they're, they're not, they want to be. Uh, but uh, again, Moose is like, nope, uh-uh, not true. Not true, Triple H. So, uh Thanks, <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. But I'm sick with Impact Wrestling. I'm sure Impact Wrestling knew about that. I'm sure Impact Wrestling knew the WWE expressed interest, uh, and uh, they they upped the offer and they made him an offer. I guess he couldn't refuse, and and uh, it was apparently a lot bigger than the offer or the previous offer that he had. So uh, he resigned with Impact Wrestling two years, and uh, says uh, again, thanks, uh, thanks, but no thanks, WWE. Um, not all the best wrestlers are in the WWE and, and all the best wrestlers that aren't in the WWE don't necessarily want to be with the WWE. So, so, uh, Moose, thank you for proving Triple H wrong on that one. All right. So Yuyo Yamura and Yota Suji, the New Japan Pro Wrestling Young Lions, it looks like they're getting ready. Looks like they're getting ready to graduate, um, Graduate from Young Lions status. Uh, they've been running the gauntlet. Uh, the last, uh, the last show, uh, their opponents uh, was Yuya Amora taking on uh, Shingo Takaji, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, and uh, Yota Shuji one on one with Kota Ibushi. Uh, two just fantastic matches, and the Young Lions held their own against the top guys in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, I. Th- Pretty sure they've earned everybody's respect. They ran through the gauntlet. They ran through some top, top stars, also including uh, Kazuchika Okada and Hiroshi Tanahashi. And I think it's time for these guys to to graduate from Young Lion status. I think they're ready. Uh, I would say send them on excursion, but with COVID right now, I don't know if well COVID's coming to an end. You know, you could send them to uh, to Rev Pro in, in the UK, or you could send them um, to um, the LA Dojo. 
uh, in the U.S. or maybe even Ring of Honor or maybe have them do excursion in AEW or maybe um, I know uh, uh, Jay White, uh, his excursion, he did some excursion up here in Canada. Uh, I don't know if they're going to send him on excursion uh, again due to COVID or, I mean, do they – Need to go on excursion. I think they're ready. I think they're ready. I think it's it's. I think they're ready to graduate from the young lion status and um, let them be full fledged main roster members of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think they're ready. It's uh, they like I said they ran the gauntlet. They did a great job. I'm a huge fan of of Yuya Omura and Yota Suji. I think they're going to be. Big, big, big stars. The future looks really bright. As right now in the LA Dojo, we got Ren Narita and Shota Umino who are, who are get ready. Uh, well, Shota Umino's excursion is over. Uh, Ren Narita is still on excursion. I'm pretty sure that's going to end soon, and they'll be back in, in Japan uh, before you know it. And two more top stars, top young stars coming back. So the future looks bright. The future looks bright for Impact Wrestling. And... Um, if if New Japan Pro Wrestling <laughs> sent me an email, which they won't, but if they sent me an email and they said and they asked me, Lewis, uh, do you think um you think uh, Yuya Yamura and uh, Yuta Shuji, you think they're uh, ready to graduate from Young Lion status? I would vote an astounding yes, one hundred percent yes. They are ready, and uh, like I said, they're going to be top stars. I mean, after the after the match with Shingo and and Kota Bushi, both Shingo and Kota had words with them. I, I think they were giving them advice, and I think I, I don't know what was what was being said, but um, they they both spoke with them. They showed a little respect uh, to um, Umura and Suji, uh, and uh, they're ready, man. They are ready to to take the next step in New Japan Pro Wrestling. 100%. And I'm um, ready for the new crop of young lions to come in uh, and take their spots um, as young lions. But, uh, but they're definitely ready. They are definitely ready to uh, to move up. Um, like I said, on the New Japan, make them, put them on the main roster for New Japan Pro Wrestling. All Japan Pro Wrestling, Suwama, he's coming back on July 11th. Suwama, the former all Japan Pro Wrestling Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion had to relinquish the title due to a positive COVID-19 test. Uh, was scheduled to take on Jake Lee, but uh, those plans fell through. Jake Lee ultimately became the Triple Crown um, Heavyweight Champion. Suwama coming back on July 11th, and I have no doubt that Suwama would want a shot at Jake Lee. Uh, would happen have to happen after the Summer Action Series, because Jake Lee will be defending his title at the Summer Action Series. Uh, so Suwama, I'm sure, will want to get uh, um, a shot at Jake Lee to get, um, which I would feel he would say his um, All Japan Pro Wrestling Triple Crown Championship back. I'm sure we'll see that match down the road. But Suwama, glad he's coming back. Glad he um, he beat COVID-19. And uh, he's coming back. Full strength, July 11th. Uh, summer Action, the first night of Summer Action Series. And Suwama will be um, returning to the professional to a professional to an all japan pro wrestling professional wrestling ring uh, so very happy to hear that and uh, this is a quick one today so last but not least brian cage brian cage is apparently not happy with the uh, with the fighter fest poster that's been released quite frankly because he's not on it so so uh he is wrestling inc again uh saying uh, fighter fighter fest goes down on July 14th in Austin, Texas. And the only official match so far is Brian Cage defending the FTW Championship against Ricky Starks. Cage noticed the new poster for the show, and despite being the only current official match, neither himself nor Starks are on it. And um, Brian Cage is apparently upset at this. He tweeted out, uh, um, Starkman Jones versus Cage is the only match announced and can't get on the poster after selling out. Ricky's hometown in Austin is the wrestling tent that I built. Hashtag wrestling circus. Um, he was a um, popular attraction for wrestling circus. He holds a few titles for them. Uh, so, so Brian Cage is upset. He's upset he's not on the poster. <clears throat> Brian Cage is pissed off. He's not on. He's not on the Fighter Fest poster, you know. And uh, my my question to, to Brian Cage is: is is your paycheck going to be any less that if you're on the poster or not? Does that take away from from the money you're making? Um, this is just just curious. I mean, you, you you're not on the poster, okay? 
being out on the poster. I'm sure there are, there's a lot of talent that's not on the poster. And granted, yes, your match is the only match that's officially announced, but it's not going to be the only match on the card. It's not even going to be the main event. It's it's might even be uh, close to the first <laughs> close to the first match on the card. Uh, well, maybe it'll be third or fourth, but it's it's not even close to being the main event. And uh, and and you're upset that you're not on the poster. Uh, okay. Now, last thing I want to do is um, is have Brian Cage listen to this and get upset with me because Brian Cage is a, is a scary looking dude, and you don't want to tangle with Brian Cage, uh, even verbally. But uh, I think Brian Cage, I think uh, maybe just get over it you're not on the poster okay there's the you're not on the poster okay not that a big deal not that big of a deal in my opinion i mean it's already sold out you know it's not like the, the show's already sold out so so why do you need to be on the poster for it's it's a sellout the show's a sellout you know your paycheck is going to be the same whether you're on the poster or not so i mean if you're on the poster i mean what's what's that going to do uh, how is that is, is it just going to make you feel, <laughs> how are things going to be different if you're on the poster or if you're not on the poster? Uh, is it just going to make you feel better for being on the poster? You feel you're being disrespected by not being on the poster? I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, you, you're, in a, you're in a top promotion, AEW. You're, you're, you've got the FTW um, champion, heavyweight championship. You're you're in a, a match against uh, Ricky Starks. You're Ricky Starks coming back from injury, so so what, what's the problem? Why why do you have people know about the match? The match is announced. It's made official. What, what why do you have to be on the poster for? Well, maybe you know maybe maybe Tony Khan. Maybe Tony Khan will feel bad and he'll 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 re he'll edit the poster and maybe um I don't know maybe uh, they could take out Sammy Guerrero. Or, may, or maybe, <laughs> maybe the last Lance Archer. Hey, Lance, is it okay if we take it out of the poster? Then we put, then we put Brian Cage on. You know, we want to keep. We want to. Brian Cage is a little upset. He's not on the poster. So maybe, maybe we could, um, maybe we could take you off the poster. We'll put. Uh, it's okay. Or, or maybe they could squeeze him in somewhere. Looks like there's a little spot here between MJF and um, Andrade. Maybe they could. <laughs> maybe they could fit. Uh, I'm looking at the poster. Here. Maybe they could fit him right. Maybe they could fit him right next to uh, this little spot here. He'll be covering Christian Cage's chest, but maybe they could squeeze him in next to MJF. Um, even um, even at the top, there's uh, there's the Big Show and there's uh, there's Dustin Rhodes. Uh, maybe they could get him like in like they squeeze him in between the Big Show and Dustin Rhodes. Maybe uh, just just to make him happy, you know. Maybe they, <laughs> maybe maybe uh, maybe they make you happy. Maybe um, maybe 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 Tony Khan could. Uh, could give him like a little extra cash under the table. <laughs> Maybe Tony Khan give him a little cash on the table. And say, hey, here, psst, psst, Brian, come here. Listen, I know you're not on the poster, but 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 <laughs> here, here's an extra fifty. Here's the extra fifty dollars. You know, take this. You know, go buy <laughs> go go buy a few kettlebells or something. Whatever, whatever you need. Just, just buy a few. <laughs> A few kettlebells on me, you know. You can work out at home. <laughs> it's uh it's it's my way of saying I'm sorry. Now I'm sorry for not getting you on the poster. You know, look, look at. Tell you what, the next poster, it'll just be well, it'll just be maybe <laughs> make him happy. The next, the next AWA, the next a AWA um um show, the pay per view or whatever event. Maybe they could just just you know just be Brian Cage as opposed or nobody else, you know. Make it up to Brian Cage. Make him feel good. Just him, that's <laughs> and the next show, the, the next big show that we do, Brian Cage, we won't put anybody on the poster except you know we'll 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 put like we'll put like you on ten different times, ten different poses. How about that? Would that make you feel better, Brian Cage? Would that make you feel better if we did that? If we just put you on the poster and nobody else? Would, would that make you feel better, Brian Cage? I know how important it is to be on the poster um, for for Fighter Fest, uh, but um, maybe we could do that. Maybe maybe Tony Khan will get you. Maybe <laughs> maybe what you do, you take that fifty, you buy him. <laughs> you take this extra fifty dollars, you get some kettlebells, and then you could um, well, well, we could take pictures, <laughs> take a few pictures of you holding the kettlebells, and we could um, we'll have like six different poses of you holding the kettlebells, and then we could put them on the poster. It'll just be you, nobody else, okay? You know, will that will that be uh, will that be okay for you, Brian? Will, will that be okay? Hmm? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just a poster. It's just a poster. To me, it's not a big deal. I mean, I, I would just be happy just to be part of AEW. It's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. But um, I guess uh, to some people, you know, they want to be on the poster. And if they're not on the poster, it's uh, it's um, they're not going to be happy about it. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network podcast. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.